So how do you install a twist throttle on the Onyx LZR Pro? That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with EV tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today we're gonna to check out a full twist throttle mod for the Onyx LZR Pro electric dirt jumper. We'll talk about why you'd want a full twist throttle, the parts we used, and how to install it. Plus we'll share all the links to the parts in the description. So let's get to it. Okay, new unboxing, and it's actually not that heavy. The Onyx LZR Pro. This is the charger. Definitely did some things wrong in the first assembly. I put the handlebars backwards, made a reel about it, and then Tim Stewart politely corrected me and told me that the handlebars were backwards. He also said that you can run the brake cable to spin around the stem over here, and that's if you're doing bar spins. We do wanna actually switch the brakes. We wanna do the rear on the left side and the front on the right side, just because we're kind of used to it when we ride the Surons. I put some new pedals on it. They're pretty much identical to the stock pedals. I don't know why I changed them. Also added these pegs. We'll put a link in the description. Class 3 e-bike. So that's 750 watts, 36 volts. It doesn't come with a throttle, but there is a port in here where you can attach a throttle, which we're going to try to do. It is a dirt jumper too, but it's also like winter in Michigan. Yeah, let's see what the guys think about this bike. So almost all of our content is made for free, and if you find any of it helpful, please support our channel with some custom run playback merch. Also, big shout out to Underground Printing for producing our merch. They're also responsible for domestic shipping, customer service, and getting these products to you as quickly as possible. I can't wait to see you guys rocking these pieces while sharing the same passion for all things EV. So let's be creative and save money at the same time. We have Brad, that Razor Kid. Brad's gonna be putting out a lot of cool content, so follow this man right here. This is the Onyx LZR Pro. I know you guys have seen pictures of this. I've been sending you guys pictures of it in the group chat. There First thoughts. Well, we switched the brakes from uh, normal bike style, so we put the back brake over here because that's how we ride. I've been very interested to try and ride this because I watched another YouTuber, One Way Corey, ride one. I've only just like wheelie like a BMX bike and me personally I was never really too good at it like I could go for a little bit but Ben used to be able to go way longer than me on that. I'm interested to see if like the little power aspect of the pedaling helps me keep it up more or if it throws me off more. I'm interested to see how it rides. It's a real balance between triggering the pedal assist in a very specific position. As you pull the bike up and reach balance point, this is the pedal assist sensor. There is another sensor, I think, within the, the Fang motor that kicks in as well. So those things work in tandem. It is heavier than a regular pedal bike and you have all this weight down here. I do like how they, instead of having it a solid front end, they did add the four after we test it out with just the regular pedal, we're gonna see if this little twist throttle does anything differently. Coming from the Razor and stuff, I'm used to the fan throttle. I might be leaning towards that, but that also might not help the bike as much as it could. Dang, you got shocks, pegs, lucky. Well, my experience uh, is pretty much just BMX as a kid. Um, I was pretty good at catwalks and stuff, but like I ran no brakes growing up. Yeah, I never really learned brake control. It was just all balance. We'll see. It's probably not gonna be pretty, but we'll give it the best shot that I can. <laughs> We have the first uh, pedal assist anything I've ever been on. It's different than what I'm used to. Um, and then the brakes were swapped before, but we fixed that. So last time I tried doing wheelies with the brake on the opposite side, I uh, looped almost immediately. It did, did not take much. I plan not on sitting, but maybe give it a little bit. So if I'm gonna try to wheelie it, I'm probably, probably gonna need some type of throttle and I'm probably just gonna stand on those pegs. And then I'll maybe be able to do a half decent wheelie on it. I've never done it, so I can't say I'm gonna be good or bad at it. So how do I turn this thing on? Do I hold it? Hold it down. Uh, okay, two, three, four, five. All right. Yeah, I just wanna feel it. Oh God, okay. Well, it's like there's, there's different gears, like you can feel it like almost shifting. <laughs> Well, I think I can. Okay, no, so you gotta time it with the pedal assist. That's a whole different, whole different thing to think about, whole different dynamic. Probably get a manual in here. <laughs> yep. 
yeah, that feels good on the pegs. 100%, really easy, and it keeps the power on super steady without you having to like throttle or anything. So if you were actually good on a bike and had balance and weren't like me, you could, you could probably shred this thing. But like after a second, it stops giving you that full power. Oh man, if you, if you were used to a normal pedal bike and you hopped on this thing, it'd be nuts. Like the influencers that I've seen on it so far, they all seem to have no problem, but they all come from a pedal bike background. I don't, so. But oh my gosh, is that thing fun. Yeah, that's a blast, 100%. Now I need, now I, now I got something else to add to my want list. Um, so if we do throw a throttle on, that motor is super smooth. It, I don't, I'm curious to see if the throttle is gonna come on the same way as the pedal assist does. It has like steps, it almost seems like. You'll be in like the first, pedal assist and then the sensor will go around again and then it'll kick it up and then the sensor will go around and then it'll kick it up. And then I also noticed the smoother you are with the power delivery with your feet, the less you feel that like bump. So if you're trying to like accelerate quickly, every time the sensor goes around there, you can literally feel it kick up like a gear almost. It's a very strange feeling, but once you get used to it, it's, it's kind of nice. impressions was great. I almost hurt myself over in the street down there. We did a top speed run and it was cruising. It took off real fast. Um, I tried to do a couple wheelies. It is hard to get up, but once you get it up, it's just like chilling. And I also noticed if you pedal the pedal one half rotation with like your foot on the back pedal, it like the motor keeps going a little bit after you stop pedaling. So it'll help you keep it up a little bit longer. For a stunter, if you ride pedal bikes and such, that you would be a killer on this in a matter of a couple days. I'm hoping that the throttle takes away that lag it has with the pedals. If it's like an on off switch, it'll probably take a little bit of getting used to, but we'll still probably make it happen today either way. We're gonna do the throttle install for the first time. Shouldn't be too difficult. We just have to pull these forks and route the wire up and down and around. There's a little hole right here in the frame and you have to like look through there and put your finger in there to guide the wire back down. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're just gonna be sitting there trying to feed the wire into here and just jamming straight into the fork with no way to get it to go down. So unfortunately, we can't avoid taking the forks out. But I'm gonna start with taking this plate out, which is just two Phillips screws underneath here. This one's kind of tight to get to, so you might have to use a ratchet like me. I don't even have a small enough screwdriver to get in between here, so we're just gonna use the ratchet on both of them. I already pre-loosened these off camera and Rick yelled at me, so I had to uh, take a quick break until he was ready. Take one of those out, give it to Rick, so that way I don't have any responsibility of losing it. Basically releasing the display, which you can already see is loosened up there. Okay, so we got that out. We're gonna work on taking these forks off now so that way I can get a look on the underneath and inside here because I don't wanna just start pulling on this because it has a little bit of resistance as you can see. So these are five millimeters. Alan, go ahead and crack these loose. We go ahead and take this top one out. Okay, so now just rest it. Personally, I'm going to take off just this back brake off the handlebars just so that way it's easier to get to and I'm not pulling on anything. Bam, and we're free. Now that we got that loose, just slide it off. Then we can just set that off to the side, let it hang. Right here, there's a hole, bottom and top, so you can run the wire from here to here. Basically, if you have two bike stands, and if you have pegs, <laughs> you can just throw it on uh, two stands. Or if you are like into bicycles, like most people, there's actual bike racks that people have that hook up onto the frame. So we flip the bike over because we have to remove this motor plate. This right now, I believe is a four. Yes, four millimeter. Okay, well that's off. We're using a T10, we're gonna loosen this one. Me personally, I'm just gonna leave it sitting there like that for now. Back behind this plastic, so we're gonna have to take off this left crank arm to get to that. So we're gonna take these crank arms off, just probably on the one side, I'm hoping. This will probably help us get this out now. But it's just like a traditional bike, like a BMX bike. We got another one, Ben, that you're gonna have to probably go through the sprocket to get in the back. Here, should pull out. That's the motor mount bolt on the front. So then there's another one right here that we have to get to. If you had power tools with Allen wrenches, it would probably be a lot quicker. All right, let's see if we can speed it up a little bit. Good 
be our last bolt. Try and do this the old fashioned way. We gotta take the chain off. With the paint on the inside of there, it made it pretty snug to get out. This okay. is the wire we need to unplug. This is your extension wire. So this piece needs to stay down here where this piece is, because this is the plug that goes in your motor. So loosening these screws that hold the battery down will give you clearance as you pull the wires through the frame. So we're gonna fish the line from the top instead of from the bottom. So hopefully that works a little bit easier. Looks to be going through pretty easily. This guy goes into the digital dash. This is your throttle cord. This hole is an oval. Obviously you have a round, round holes, and ovals don't line up. So we're gonna make this a little bit ovaled. I need power tools. I don't wanna to take too much material off because then it's not gonna be very resistant to the elements. And just like that, there you have it. There she is. So you just connected the throttle extension cord and hide all this stuff in there. Let's put this stuff back in here and let's see if this throttle works. Grab all the cords that we had unplugged here. So this is obviously the battery cord for the motor. Throttle cord goes in there. We also have this rear sensor. And those of you who are sitting there like, how do you know which one is which? They have different <laughs> pins, so you literally cannot mess this up. So don't worry about like marking them or anything like that. There we go. We're good. Is that good enough for you, Rick? Mm -hmm. Once that cover goes back on, you won't see anything. All right, so before we tighten everything down, plug in the throttle, we will turn on the bike. All right, so we're gonna attach the display. We're gonna power on the bike, see if this throttle works. Okay, power's on. Okay. Hey! Just freaked out on us, hold on. Turn it back on. It's probably tripping out because the back tire is not spinning with that sensor. Yeah, that's all it is, it's that sensor's kicking you off. So now we're just trying to make sure there's enough clearance to put the display back on. There you go. Back to what we were doing in the back with this motor. Let's get this thing back in there. All right, so we'll put the chain on, we'll put the cover back on, put the crank back on, and then the last part will be putting the throttle on the handlebars. One debt to society later. We have everything connected. Put back the motor cover. All the wires are good. Display is back in. Crank arm is back in. Now Brad is just putting our throttle on. A couple taps. And she's on there. All right, so for anybody that wants to do this, you can't run the wires from the bottom. Don't waste your time. They will not work. Just run them from the top. It'll take two seconds. Make sure that your plugs are connected all the way. I didn't plug it in all the way, so it was a little loose. So once we put the motor back in, it kind of rocked the wire, making the connection 100% complete. guys think it's not like a surround where it's like all the torque right away it is exactly how the pedal assist feels it is very smooth a very gradual torque curve you kind of have to chop it like a two-stroke if you're trying to keep the front end up is what I've learned but maybe I'm just not smooth enough with it yet I'm just giving it throttle and back and off throttle back and off because it doesn't have torque unless you floor it and then once you're floored it like falls down again not having a throttle on the SE bikes this is exactly what you'd want. When you're getting tired on the SE bike and you've been pedaling all day and you like want to continue doing wheelies and you just want to pick up and do like manual wheelies, this is where this comes into play where you have like that little bit of power to where if you get good with the brakes, you can just use the throttle. You know, what, what would you look like if you had this thing for like a month? I'd probably be riding it at like uh, the pump track 
and like riding it more like a motorbike, more like a Sauron. I wouldn't have to be doing pedaling as much and I could do the like knee tricks, like uh, seat tricks and stuff like that a lot more. It's definitely fits somewhere in the middle between like your Sauron and then your pedal bike, I yeah, guess. Definitely. I think the bike should have came with some type of throttle, whether it be a twist throttle like this or like a thumb throttle. After we put the throttle on, I actually was able to wheelie it. Couldn't wheelie it earlier. But yeah, yeah, definitely have to ride with a higher seat height with this bike, just with the frame design, and I guess probably also the extra weight from the battery being so low. It'll be interesting to see what they launch after this bike that may, may compete with the Suron. So that's the full twist throttle mod for our Onyx LZR Pro, and we shared all the links to the parts in the description. In the next video, we'll attempt to install the Lunacycle Ludacris V2 controller, the most powerful controller made for the M600 motor. If you have any questions or suggestions, just leave them in the comments below. If you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.